Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines. Health workers in Germany go on strike against poor working conditions. Gilboa prison escapee Zakaria Zubedi hospitalized following alleged torture. Haitian political parties sign agreement to form transitional government. And indigenous communities hold historic protest for land rights in Brazil. Our first story is from Germany, where around 2,000 health workers in Berlin have gone on strike. Nursing staff at the Charité and Vivantes hospitals walked out on September 9th. Organized by the Verdi Union, they are protesting poor working conditions and low wages. Workers are facing chronic understaffing issues amid an increasing workload. Workers employed by the Vivantes subsidiaries in cleaning and food services also held a two-day strike. Subsidiary workers are currently paid up to 500 euros lesser than regular employees. The union rejected a contract offer made by Vivantes on September 10th. It reportedly did not contain any provisions for rotating or night shift allowances. It also did not mention paid sick leave. The strike action has impacted entire wards of the two hospitals. Despite this, the hospitals declared an end to official negotiations last week. They also refused to sign an emergency service agreement which would have allowed basic care. In our next story, recaptured Palestinian prisoner Zakaria Zubedi has been hospitalized. He was among the six prisoners who escaped from Israel's Gilboa prison last week. As of September 11th, four people, including Zubedi, had been recaptured. The Palestinian Detainees Affairs Commission stated that Zubedi was severely beaten. His brother told local media that his leg had been broken and he was not allowed to sleep. The Detainees Affairs Commission has stated that Israeli forces have not allowed the detainees to meet their lawyers. This has made it very difficult to verify reports of their health. The four recaptured escapees were presented in court on September 11th. They have been remanded in police custody till September 19th. They are now facing additional charges, including planning an armed attack. Meanwhile, two escapees, Ayman Kamamji and Mondale Nafat, have managed to evade arrest. However, Kamamji's brother and cousin were arrested and questioned by Israeli forces on September 13th. Israel has arrested at least seven other relatives of escapees so far. We go to Haiti, where major political forces have agreed to form a transitional government. Presidential and legislative elections will be held in 2022 along with a constitutional referendum. Around 20 political parties and organizations have signed the proposal by de facto head of state Ariel Henry. The agreement will eliminate the position of transitional president. Henry will lead the unity government as acting prime minister with a new council of ministers. A 33-member constituent assembly will also be set up to draft a new constitution. The members will be appointed by state institutions and civil society organizations. Opposition forces have stated that the negotiations have allowed for the release of political prisoners. Signatories have also committed to preventing violent attacks by illegal armed groups. The agreement signals a key step towards resolution of ongoing political uncertainty. Meanwhile, Ariel Henry himself has been summoned in relation to the assassination of Journal Moise. According to the prosecution, he spoke with one of the main suspects at his private residence on July 7th. He has been summoned to testify on September 14th. Haitian authorities have arrested 44 people, including 18 Colombians and two Haitian Americans so far. And finally, Brazil's Supreme Court is set to rule on a landmark case on indigenous territorial rights. It is related to an appeal filed by the Zockling people against the state of Santa Catarina. The court will now decide if the indigenous land claims dating before October 1988 are legitimate. As the hearing continues, indigenous communities have been leading an unprecedented protest in Brasilia. If the court rules in favor of the community, it could reopen another 800 land claims. Here is a video featured by Brazil de Fato on this historic protest. To defend the life and legacy of the native peoples, more than 6,000 indigenous people have occupied Brasilia, Brazil's capital city, since August 15th this year. We are fighting against any suppression of the rights of indigenous peoples, rights that we conquered historically. Our story does not start now. Our story has more than 521 years. This is the largest mobilization in the history of the indigenous movement in Brazil. They have representatives of 173 ethnic groups protesting against the Jair Bolsonaro government and the anti-indigenous agenda underway in the legislative. The attention turned to the ruling of the so-called time frame limitation thesis, which is on the agenda of the Supreme Court and will define the future of the indigenous lands demarcation in the country. Thousands of indigenous people camped in the Three Powers Square. Using the power of songs, prayers and candles, they make daily vigils in front of the Supreme Court. Yeah! 
In practice, the time frame limitation thesis is used by agribusinesses' representatives to reveal the demarcation of the indigenous lands and make it impossible. According to the measure created in the government of Michel Temer, the demarcation of land can only happen if indigenous peoples prove that they occupy the area before or in the exact day of the Constitution's enactment, on October 5, 1988. The process that is being considered once more by the ministers concerns the possession of the territory of the Shoklang people from Santa Catarina State. It will serve as a basis to judge all similar cases. In all, 310 indigenous lands demarcation processes are stopped, according to the Indigenous Missionary Council. This bill will destroy our territories, our rivers. It will end our mother nature, the Amazon rainforest, and your lives, the lives of non-indigenous people. The camping Fighting for Life and the intense schedule of activities in Brasilia are organized by the articulation of indigenous peoples of Brazil with the grassroots indigenous organizations. <laughs> That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.